prices of everything are going up. Food prices are going up, clothing prices are going up, rent prices are increasing, home prices are increasing, everything is going up and people are concerned for a very good reason. The Fed and the politicians are telling us that this is all temporary and transitory. Is this even fixable and can the Fed fight the inflation? If you're new to this channel, my name is Mariusz Skonieczny. I run microcap explosions and private membership website dedicated to microcap stocks, which are ignored and hated by the investment industry. I also wrote 10 books on investing, one of which is available for a free download at microcapexplosions.com. So make sure you get yourself a copy. When people hear the word inflation, they automatically associated with increases in prices, whether it's home prices, car prices, grocery prices, they associate the word inflation with the price increases for goods and services. However, that's not necessarily the correct definition. You see, inflation comes from the word inflate. And inflate, think about inflating a balloon. So what inflation is, the increase in the money supply. Inflation is not price increases. Now, increase in the money supply can be one of the factors for price increases, but inflation in itself is not price increases. Prices can increase for many different reasons. For example, if you're selling a house and then there is a lot of people bidding on your house, the price of your house is going to increase. If you're selling a car and there is a lot of people interested in buying your car, the price will also increase because the bidding war will increase the price of your car. Such price increases had zero to do with inflation, which again is the increase in the money supply. They were all about demand and supply. And you know from Economics 101, when supply stays the same and demand increases, then prices are going to increase. But prices increase not only when demand goes up. You could have supply going down and demand staying the same and prices are still going to increase. We see this today everywhere. We have tremendous supply chain disruptions. In order to produce things, you need raw materials, you need labor, you need transportation and all sorts of other things. What we have today, we definitely have labor shortages because of COVID. So you get people that get sick, you have people that die. And even if they don't die and they just get sick or don't get sick very seriously, they still might not be able to come to work because the employer might not allow them to come to work or the government might not allow them to come to work. Or you might have the government paying them to stay at home whether it's through unemployment or some kind of help, they get incentivized not to work. All of this has impact on supply. And on the transportation side, we don't have enough ships to move goods from one continent to another. We don't have enough truckers to move goods within the country on trucks. We have shortages in this. All of this impacts supply. And when we have a situation where supply is impacted and we have demand, that's skyrocketing, then we're going to have price increases. Increase in the money supply also impacts the prices. It's one of the factors because when you have more money chasing the same amount of goods and services, prices are going to go up. And when the government or the Fed is printing more money, that devalues each individual monetary units. So prices in those units will go up. Today we have a lot of talk about inflation and what the Fed or the government is going to do it. And we see some examples of how the Fed fought inflation in the 80s when Paul Volcker was the Fed chairman and when the inflation was running at 10%, what Paul Volcker did is he jacked up interest rates to 20% to stop inflation. Today we hear that the Fed is going to do something similar, but can the Fed actually do what Paul Volcker did in the 80s? And I don't think it can. I don't think it's mathematically possible for the Fed to fight inflation the way that it did in the 80s. And here's what I mean. The US has almost 30 trillion of debt. This is a massive amount of debt. Because interest rates are so low today, the government is paying about 
560 billion in order to service that debt. So if you take 560 billion and you divide it by the almost 30 trillion of debt, the cost is about a little bit less than 2%. Just to put things in perspective, when Paul Volcker was fighting inflation, he jacked up the federal funds rate to 20%. Today, it is at 0.25%. Imagine this. If the US government had to pay not 20, but 13% under 30 trillion, it would have to pay $4 trillion per year just to service the debt. $4 trillion. Do you know how much the government is collecting in revenue? $4 trillion. It's collecting $4 trillion. So in other words, every penny that the government collects would have to go to service the debt. Forget about paying for Social Security. Forget about paying for defense. Forget about paying for social programs. Every single penny would have to go to service the debt. But interest rates don't even have to go to 13% for this to be such an Armageddon. If the federal government has to pay 4%, then the cost would be $1 trillion per year. If interest rates were at 6%, they would have to pay $1.5 trillion per year. So as you can see, the Fed cannot raise interest rates significantly to fight inflation, even if it wanted to. It has its hands tied. The only way that this would be possible is if the federal government actually reduced the debt. You might say, okay, well, let's do it. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like asking your irresponsible uncle to start being responsible with money. I already told you how much the federal government is collecting in revenues. Do you know how much it is spending? Because really, the first step in reducing debt is to actually not add any more debt, which means spending less than what is being brought in. That's the first step. So again, do you want to guess how much the federal government is spending? Take a guess. Seven trillion. Yep. Se no. Yep. Seven trillion. It is collecting four and it is spending seven trillion. Okay. I'll say one thing. This is not normal. Usually the deficit is not as big as three trillion. And the government spent a lot more over the last two years to fight the pandemic. So the last two years are not a great representation. So we can give them some slack here. However, if you go historically, if you go back every year and you look at how much the government collected and how much it spent, it's always the same. They always spend more money than they collect. If they collect $1, they spend 1.2. If they collect $100, they spend 140. If they collect 10 trillion, they spend 13 trillion. It doesn't matter how much they collect. It doesn't matter what the tax rate. It doesn't matter if it's Republicans or Democrats. It doesn't matter. The only thing that stays constant is they always spend more than they collect with no fault. It's always the same. And that's a big problem because imagine this. If you are a responsible person, if you spend less than you make, you put some money away, you're just generally responsible. When you have a problem, it's much easier for you to deal with this problem. You can handle the problem. But if you are irresponsible, you spend more money than you take in, you continue to get into more credit card debt, you can't hold a job, then when you have a problem like pandemic, you don't have a good way of dealing with the situation. There is no margin of error. And this is exactly what we're dealing with. You see, we can't blame the government for the pandemic. I mean, we can blame them for how they handle this, whatever, but we can't blame them for the pandemic. But what we can blame them is you see, during good years, normal years, they should have been responsible. They should have been spending less than they're bringing in. They should have been cutting expenses, but they didn't. They should have been reducing debt, but they didn't. And then when something like the pandemic hits, there is no room of error. And then, so what do they do when the pandemic hits? They increase expenses, they stimulate, they add on more debt. The situation just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Now you tell me, how are they going to handle those price increases? Okay, 
the first two factors that I said, the supply chain disruptions and then the labor shortages, that's going to resolve itself. That's going to get better. Okay, so I'll give them this. But what about the increase in the money supply? In order to do that, the Fed would have to raise interest rates to pull the liquidity out of the system. How are they going to do this when we now have $30 trillion of debt, $6 trillion more than what we had two years ago? How are they going to raise the interest rates? The Fed can't raise interest rates. It is impossible without bankrupting the country. In summary, prices of everything are going up. People are noticing it. People are panicking. Some of the factors for price increases are transitory, like the labor shortages or supply chain disruptions. I believe they're going to be fixed. But the money supply situation, the increase in the money supply, which is the definition of inflation, I don't think that can be fixed. I don't know what they're going to do about it. The Fed wants to raise interest rates, but it can't because the big brother or big uncle cannot start acting responsibly ever. No matter how much money it collects, it always spends more. No matter what happens, the deficits stay. During the good years, they don't act responsible. And during the pandemic or during the bad years, they act even more irresponsible. With that being said, we can't really do anything about it. You and I can't do anything about it. So I better start this video here before I get too angry. However, what we can do about it or what you can do about it is you can subscribe to this channel, you can like this video, you can share the video and you can comment on the video. And I really want to know, you tell me, how are they going to fix it? Is it fixable or is it completely hopeless? Drop me a comment below.